Thank you so very much for clicking on this video of Oncidium Twinkle General Care. In the Care Collab series, I appreciate your company. And boy, do I have a surprise for you. First of all, I want to say thank you to all the channels that you see scrolling across the screen right now. And I would like to make a special shout out to Steven Zimmerman, who is joining for the first time. So please welcome together with me, Steven Zimmerman. Thank you, Steven, so very, very much for jumping in into the deep end and doing this. I so appreciate it. All the links will be in my description below and please go visit the other videos and see how their twinkles are doing. Probably by the time that you can see my twinkles, you might think, uh, no, we're gonna move on to the other channels and see if they do better. But the reason I did a call to action for a care collab on the general care of Insidium and Twinkles is because I have a tale of three different circumstances and situations and I will discuss my care and then I will welcome all the suggestions in the comments below as to how I can improve the culture for the Oncidium Twinkles that I have. So throughout the entire intro, you saw pictures of Oncidium Twinkle Red Fantasy from when I bought her, Oncidium Twinkle Cinnamon, same day, and Oncidium Twinkle White Fantasy. All three were bought on the same day in December of 2019. And of course, when you get them from the garden center, they're already starting to bloom, but it was twinkle season anyway, which is usually late winter, early spring, or depending on when the pseudobulbs are actually matured. So there's no real rhyme or reason when exactly what time of year it twinkles will bloom, but every time a growth matures, there will be blooms. That is the plan and that is how they normally behave if the culture is done properly. Twinkles being a cross of Chiroforum with pure yellow Oncidium and Ornithorhynchum, which is generally shades of pink. You know, you get all these other colors. Now there's a lot of Oncidium twinkles with a variety of different colors. Again, without rhyme or reason, they just come out in different colors and then have been sectioned off to the red, the cinnamon and the white. All are highly, highly fragrant one orchid will knock you out of the room. To my nose, I do not detect any difference in the fragrances whatsoever, because when mine bloomed, they all bloomed at once, and then they're so intense that, anyway, the beautiful honeysuckle and vanilla fragrance with the sugar, it all wafts into one. I cannot tell a difference between any of the three colors. So the cinnamon is named according to the color of the blooms as opposed to the fragrance, just to make that. 100% clear because I love cinnamon fragrance. This one does not smell of cinnamon, not even sugar cinnamon, not even anything close to French toast kind of smell. <laughs> but let's have a look at mine. Ta-da! Right? So if you've made it this far, if you would like to continue on, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. But I wanted you to see the difference between what I bought and what I have now. And that is Red Fantasy, Cinnamon, white fantasy. The red fantasy and the cinnamon were repotted straight away when they came home because they were working on new growths and I saw new roots into lecker and self-watering. The white fantasy I waited until I could see new growths and new roots. So it was in its nursery can with me for quite some time, much slower in its progress. When the timing came, straight away I potted it up, same as the others, lecker and self-watering. I did not distinguish between large lecker and small lecker. Everything is mixed up in the pot, no matter the size difference. On that potting up video of the white fantasy, Michael McCarthy said to me, good luck with the white fantasy in a pot. They object to that, they hate it, they prefer to be mounted. And I was like, okay, thank you for the heads up. I appreciate that very much. And then I was thinking, watch me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but at this moment I have to laugh because Michael McCarthy is a gem. His knowledge and everything he shares in comments section is top notch and let me say 100% you can rely on it to a T. And here's me going, watch me. <laughs> this is white fantasy. It did not make it. It completely objected to being in the pot. So why didn't I save it in time? Well, I wanted to prove that I could do it. I wanted to say to Michael, look, look, it's doing great. Um, I can't do that. 
I tried a lot. I tried everything, my usual flushing, everything going through. I tried the soaking method, just soaking the pot, not moving the orchid, not stressing it out further. All the things that I normally say that can be done in order to save an orchid. White Fantasy got that luxury treatment, which Red Fantasy didn't, and we'll get to cinnamon, but it failed. Okay, so this looks cruel, this looks horrible, but I wanted to see what happens. And I know I can replace a white fantasy from my garden center if, if I ever choose to do so. And I am sorry to every orchid aficionado that says this, should, this is unacceptable. I agree with you. I was trying to prove a point and I failed. Lesson learned. Cinnamon, another story altogether. Now it's getting soaks as opposed to being watered from above or flushed. And the reason being, it is languishing. It is actually looking the way white fantasy was eight months ago. I have no new growth, nothing. Red fantasy, it's a very, very vigorous plant. I have lots of new growth, probably about eight, if not 10 in here. I haven't counted, but I've also got some bulbs, you know, desiccating in the center there, and all that is normal. And then I've got a lot of leaf tip dieback. So the leaf tip dieback is for me purely environmental. I do not have any humidity here that I can give twinkles a great start to their growing. They will start out very, very clean and eventually I will get leaf tip dieback. This is not fertilizer because in my opinion, 160 parts per million for the Red Fantasy is not a lot of fertilizer compared to how big she is. Sometimes I throw in 300 because that's what I've got left in the bucket, but I flush a lot. Well, cinnamon doesn't get flushed because I don't want to cause any rot issues on these pseudobulbs if it decides to throw out a new growth. So it gets soak, soak flushed. I fill the water to the top with plain RO water and then I drain it and then I just fill the reservoir with plain RO water because right now she's actually not doing anything. There's no need to fertilize her at all. Every other flush, I will do a seaweed soak. I don't believe there are any viable roots in this pot. I'm just guessing. I haven't looked, I haven't checked. I'm guessing there are no viable roots in this pot simply because of the behavior of insidiums and how their roots are. If the orchid is not doing much on the surface, chances are there's not much happening in the pot either. But I'm just gonna live in faith and keep going with my seaweed flushes and my plain RO water soaks. And I do have some bulbs that are still chubby enough. And I don't see why they shouldn't produce a new growth at some point. And when that happens, I'm going to revisit my setup. Definitely not able to mount any of these insidium here in my climate. I will not be able to keep up with the watering. They love their water. That is just too much with my humidity here at 30%, which is an average for seven months of the year. I have days I go down to 10% and that can last for a week. So I cannot mount these. They have to somehow live and survive in my care in self-watering or as in white fantasy, die in my care. Again, I do apologize. This is, can be sometimes triggering, but you know, there's only one way to show progress or lack thereof by sticking through and holding on and hopefully trying to prove someone wrong. <laughs> well, again, <laughs> the joke's on me. The fertilizer is active growth. This one, the Red Fantasy, is getting pumped full with 160 parts per million, sometimes 300, but it's a, almost an every second day flush now. When I'm in my blooming alley, that's where they live. I flush them through because I've got others to deal with, whether they've got water in the reservoir or not. Except for the cinnamon, again, that one just gets a soak. It's a shame. Now, I could cut off all the tips of the leaves, ah, but then again, I have to dip everything into cinnamon, and who's to say that the next dry wind isn't gonna take out those fresh cut back leaves as well, leaving me with what? So it's not pretty. I comfort myself in the knowledge that I do not grow for orchid shows, but if there is a hot wind and then for days on end, it stays so dry, the lack of humidity here in my climate, that will make the leaf tips look like such because you see, this one is not struggling with hydration at all. I don't have any concertina leaves. She's busy. There's roots in that pot. There are no crinkly leaves whatsoever. 
So I'm expecting another nice bloom spectacle from this one when it comes time for her to bloom. And I'm really looking forward to it because the fragrance is really, really delicious. I mean, one will knock you out of the room. Uh, three, yeah, that, that's a lot. That's a lot of fragrance all at the same time. I don't know if this qualifies as a care video as such. It could qualify as a how to not care for one, how to hopefully care for one, to then readjust the culture in the future when new growths come. And this one is how to care for an Oncidium in Lekka and self-watering with humidity at 10%, maximum 30%, eight months of the year. But I thought it was interesting anyway to do this as a care collab because there are so many twinkle growers out there that show great leaves, always successful, everything's blooming nicely. And as a progress thing to start off right now with a twinkle care collab, the updates in future will be very, very interesting in my opinion, and I hope that you feel the same way. So the channels listed are all in the description below. Eventually, when I see their videos go live, I will change out the links to the respective videos. And I would suggest everybody that is also seeing similar signs, symptoms, failures, to go and check out those channels and see how their Oncidium twinkles are doing, which includes me, because I clearly have a lot to learn. I can leave this one as is, doing great. I'm gonna have to figure this one out. I'm thinking, same setup, lack on self-watering, but when she starts to throw out new roots with a new growth, it's going into very, very small lecker, possibly a smaller pot as well. Don't know, we'll have to wait and see. And when I see another white fantasy, I may pot it up again or mount it. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm really not trying to make fun of the situation, but there's something in my head that says it can be done. It can be done. We shall see in the future how it goes. I appreciate your time. I look forward to your observations as to what I could tweak to make things better. Your opinions are valuable to me, and I appreciate the time that you took to watch and then leave me those comments. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody, and please, please stay safe and take care. Bye.